All right. First off, I want to uh, start off congratulating Sheldon. He won the Distinguished Service Award, if my information is correct, and uh, very, very uh, well deserved. I think it's the same award Kent's won, and um, so very, very well deserved. And and uh, congratulations on that. And uh, you'll be uh, you'll be a Hall of Famer here before long, Sheldon. So, can uh, congrats and, uh, and and well deserved. So. Um, Happy, happy, happy for him, and uh, he, he does. He's done a great job since I've been here. I know he's done a great job long before that with the Saints and and, and everything else he's been covering. So, uh, as it relates to our team, we're just you know just just full steam ahead. It's obviously a little bit of a disruption with the with the uh, contact tracing and some of the quarantining, but it hasn't affected uh, hasn't affected any of our players. And and, and we're full steam ahead with practice. Full steam ahead. Um, getting getting prepared. We've got um, two games in three days now with with, with Sam Houston and and uh, and New Orleans on Monday and, and and Wednesday, and then turn around and um, you know have have another game a couple of days later, a couple couple of days after North Texas. We got VCU, so it'll be fast and furious here with four games in eight days, and we want to continue uh, continue to build on the momentum that we've uh, that we've had. Yeah, well, you think is this team kind of anxious to play? I mean, you've been playing like once a week here, but I mean, are they kind of really, kind of ready to play three games next week and kind of get it you know, in, into a game action into, the, into that in that rhythm? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think our guys are excited uh, excited to play. You know, we did get thrown out of rhythm a little bit. We were in a we were in a very very good rhythm. I think a, a lot of um, a lot of basketball's rhythm and, and chemistry and 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 being able to being able to uh, uh, to stay in that and and to have good rhythm, good chemistry, and and we we just haven't had that. It we were we were starting to get going. You know, in the past, we've really around Christmas is when we've been able to to to, to take off. I really felt like in the last week we had, we'd started our we'd started kind of our our initial initial uh, initial takeoff there. But, um, so, you know, we've got good leadership, we've got good players, we've got good guys, and I, I'm hopeful that we can, we can continue that uh, this week, I've, although it's going to be with different circumstances, different settings, and that sort of thing. Uh, one more thing. When, when is Josh LeBlanc officially eligible to play? He can play Monday. And he'll be in, he'll be in uniform? He can play Monday. Hey, Will, I was going to ask you, uh, first of all, uh, Brandon had me muted, but thanks for the uh, kind words. Second, uh, well, deserved. About, well deserved. I was going to ask about Josh LeBlanc and also what, what does he bring to you? I know you, you've talked about his defense all this time. What, what extra does he bring besides his he, defense? Yeah, he's eligible to play Monday if, if we, if, 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 if we want to play him, but uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's long, he's athletic, he's physical. Um, he can um, uh, he, he can make some things happen on the defensive end. He rebounds the ball well. He's got some rim protection. You know, he's just he's a he's a he's an all around very very good player. He's a great got a great basketball IQ. He's a great screener on offense. I said this the other day, and it's true. He always is in the play, but he's never in the way on offense, which is which is very very difficult to do as a as, as a big guy like he is. But he's always around the ball and in the play and, and somewhere where he can make a play. But he's never in the way of, uh, of 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 your other guys and of some of your playmakers. So I think he'll be a be a helpful uh, helpful part of our team uh, as we get him back and get him up and going. And and one more question: You didn't have any positives at all on the team. On our team, no. Yeah. Okay. Not as of now, no. Okay. Did you have any? <laughs> um, we, hey Coach, uh, so obviously we saw Charles, you know, last week and get a little bit of action there. I, I guess I'm just curious as to what the ramp up process is going to be like with him. And do you expect the minutes restriction moving forward with him at all? I think we can, uh, you know, he, he practiced fully on Wednesday. I think he'll continue to, to, to fully practice. And um, I think with that, I think the, the, the ramp up will, will continue and he'll be able to, um, play as many minutes as we need him here moving forward. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I mean, how do you get the pluck these teams out of nowhere to schedule? Is like kind of like a waiver wire? Do you look and see who's canceled games? You thought, okay, I see Sam Houston. They canceled the they canceled Houston. 
that game got canceled. You kind of like go on a waiver wire, look for teams to to kind of fill in. Well, Coach Hooten and I had been talking for a while. We had talked about playing a regular season game when we before all the COVID hit, and the dates didn't work. And then we had talked about once COVID hit with the condensed schedule playing. And he actually reached out to me on Monday, I think it was, and said, look, our game with Houston's getting ready to get canceled. Do you have any openings? Because he wants to bus everywhere. And Huntsville's about four and a half, five hours from us. So he wants to, he wants to bus everywhere. And um, I said, look, as of now, we don't have anything. But I, I knew with some of the contact tracing issues, I knew by that night we could, we could have, a, have an issue where we wouldn't be able to play Saturday. And then um, I said, well, hold tight, and I'll call you back Monday night, and I'll have an answer. And um, give, I mean, he had to move a game. He had a game scheduled for Saturday that he moved. We were originally going to play on Sunday, but the contact tracing doesn't run out till Sunday, so we had to move the game till Monday. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of gymnastics, jumping through some hoops and jumping around. But you just figure it out. You find a way. Matt Laborde from our administration uh, has done a really, really good job of staying involved. And you know, I got Matt and, and Coach Hooten and myself on a, on a conference call, and we had the thing hammered out in about three minutes. Well, a football schedule could be that easy. Be be great. I mean, There's a few more factors with the football scheduling, but I mean, we, I mean, look, it's a team effort now. Nikki, uh, you know, Coach Fargus had to um, wait at five o'clock. She had to approve because now they won't be able to do a shoot around in the gym. I mean, Dan Gadsden from facilities. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of folks that are that are involved, and and um, you know Matt Laborde has to tie all those folks together. But there's there's a ton of folks that are involved uh, to 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 make it uh, to to pull the game off. Sean, you can go. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, well, you were a little upset, uh, I guess, a little bit with the offense the other night, not getting to maybe 95 or 100 points. After watching the film, what did you did, our, was it? Our spacing and our screening was very, very poor. Um, our spacing and our screening are what caused us to turn the ball over too much. We were driving in tight areas. We were driving at two-man sides. We were just doing things that are – very, very difficult, uh, very, very difficult uh, to do, even as talented of offensive players as we have and as talented of an offensive team as we are. Um, it was very, very, very difficult with some of the uh, some of the tight spaces we were trying to drive the ball. So we've gone about trying to trying to correct that this week. I was very adamant in our film session on uh, Wednesday about where I expected our spacing, how I expected our spacing and screening to improve. And um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll be the case on Monday. Hey, Coach, uh, can you just talk about Javante a little bit? I mean, it looks like, you know, these first four or five games, he's got a fluidity to his game that maybe he hasn't had, you know, in past years. He's letting the game come to him a little bit more on offense. And just talked a little bit about kind of the, the smoothness in which he's playing right now on offense. Yeah, Jay's playing well. You know, he's um, it's what you said. He's, you know, against Louisiana Tech, we need him to score. He need to make some shots for us. He kind of got us going there uh, early in the game with the shooting and, 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 and making shots and making things happen. And, um, you know, he's had games where he's been more of a facilitator. But um, you look at against St. Louis in the, in the first half, he was a scorer. Second half, he was more of a facilitator. So I just think he's got a much better understanding and much better feel for, for how things need to go and for how things are going. And, and he's done a, um, he, he's done a phenomenal, phenomenal job. He's improved quite a bit defensively. I'm very, very proud of his progress uh, defensively. He's getting some more rebounds. Uh, we're going to continue to work on the defense and the rebounding, but he's, um, he's, he's playing at a, at a high level right now. And we want to keep that going. Anyone else? It's like the world's quickest press conference. There we go. Me? Oh, you got another question, Sean? Yeah. Well, yeah. You've been using basically 10 guys in the rotation. Um, with getting Josh in there now, how difficult is that to try to work him in? I know it's a good problem to have, but how difficult will it be to try to get him some a lot of minutes? I mean, that's part of it. I'd rather have too many players and not enough. That was the issue we had last year. So uh, it's much better to much better to to, to have uh, you know to, to, to have the situation that we've got now. But we'll um, we'll work through that. And like I said, it's a good good problem. It's going to create some opportunity for some guys, and and we'll um, you know we'll work through it and, and do what's best for our team. Okay. 
Go ahead, Ron. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I know you're a ways away from the SEC play yet, but have you snuck a look at TV, at different teams on, 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 on games on TV? I've, been, I've, I've kind of bounced around between Missouri and Arkansas and Kentucky. Have you watched anybody yet? I've watched a bunch of them, yeah. I watched Ole Miss and Jackson State last night. What's your impression of what you've seen so far around the league? I, mean, I think I think Missouri looks great. You mentioned Missouri. I think they look I think they look really really good. They're shooting the ball well. They're playing at a faster pace. They've still got, you know, Coach Martin's uh, defense down, and so I, I think Missouri looks good. I, th I thought a couple times I've seen Florida. I thought they've looked very very uh, very very good. Kentucky's Kentucky. They'll get it going. Um, Tennessee's looks great defensively. They're still working out some things, I think, on the offensive end, but they look tremendous defensively. I got to see part of their game against Colorado the other day. So, um, you know, I think I think uh, the league's, um, you know, the league's taking some uh, some tumbles in non-conference, but it's going to be very, very competitive. A lot of these teams have young guys, and they're trying to get young guys involved, young guys in the game, and makes it uh, make, makes it very, very challenging. But uh, from what I've seen so far, Missouri looks tremendous.